Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I was <laughs> just about to record this video like five hours ago, and then uh, Ethan Van Skyver invited me on a, a live stream. I haven't really been doing live streams a lot, but I had a, a I basically had a, a three punch combo. Uh, three friends hit me up within about twelve hours. They're like, "You gotta get back on the live streams. This is not like optional." For crowdfunding, yeah, you do three videos a day, you promote your stuff, but that's a totally different environment than live streaming. It, it's hard to, it's almost like, I guess the best analogy is like, imagine, you know, like, I don't think The Tonight Show is a big deal right now. I mean, it's kind of, but like in the 80s and 90s, it was a huge deal. Like, you wouldn't have a giant new blockbuster movie and not have all of the leads go on The Tonight Show. Jumped up a, a lot, like 6,000 today. 100 backers, so uh, thanks for that. Now I gotta start thinking about what the uh, stretch goals are gonna be. So anyway, uh, Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar. We got Pandemic, just about to hit 10,000 on the second one. First one did like 53,000, but then it shut down. And then here's Expendables Good Help. This thing's just, you know, slow and steady uh, wins the race. I kind of forgot that Jawbreakers God King took like, I don't know, eight months or so to hit 250,000. So Expendables Go to Hell, Hitting 216,000 in like, uh, what, three months? That's uh, pretty good. So um, anyway, um, by, by a weird coincidence, I was talking to Ethan earlier today, and I mentioned just like Twitter is just getting really dark. So like, I don't know, for the last year or so, I've been saying like, get off Twitter. It just makes everyone unhappy. It just It's just, it's just awful. And a lot of people followed me, and not one single person says, boy, you, you sure did lead me down the garden path. Oh, I left and three months later, everything's terrible. Everyone's like, I didn't realize how much it was affecting me until I left. Um, but I, I'm seeing stuff right now, just all this drama and like, it's it's dark, man. Like, it's really dark. Um, so uh, I was even, I was like, I'm not even peeking at it anymore. I don't even check just to laugh or see the cringe. Like, but send me, people send me direct links. So um, I went to go check this out. So this is... Uh, just awful. What it is, is, is three people who can't sell comics barely at all, barely to save their own life they can sell comics, trying to cancel Sean Gordon Murphy for using Indiegogo. That's it. That's it. I, I, I've said this before and I've said this again. I'll say it again. I fought in two wars. The worst people I've ever met in my life are SJWs in the comic book industry. Uh, the analogy I was given to, to Ethan, you know, uh, you know, Iraq, Afghanistan, you have terrorists, jihadists, whatever. They blow up like the main bridge, you know, that leads to the local FOB, forward operating base. Um, they blow up a power station, but they would never blow up like every single bridge into town, every road into town, and every power station in the entire city. You know, like it, weirdly enough, their plan was not complete and total destruction of anything they could destroy. That's why I say SJWs are worse, because they, they live just to hurt people. And we're going to see all the usual suspects. They all know each other. They all collude. Uh, so just to give some frame of reference to this, uh, Sean Gordon Murphy uh, announced the title of his upcoming Indiegogo. It's been known for a while. About, I don't know, six months ago, he started saying, I'm going to do crowdfunding. He said Indiegogo one time, and then he said he wasn't committed to Indiegogo. He just used that as kind of a, you know, a blanket term, like you call a copy or a Xerox. Um, but uh, then he he committed to Indiegogo, which I, he did a couple weeks ago. Um, but then he got some press on Bleeding Cool uh, when he announced the title. The title is Sean Murphy's The Plot Holes. <laughs> There's still time to change it. <laughs> I will say that. He's doing some sort of metatextual thing, combining a bunch of different genres. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm a fan of his work and his behavior, customer service, which is not a code word. Um, but uh, yeah, this does not look cool to me. Uh, oh boy. Uh, so he, you know, uh, you know, this morning he says, are you all ready for something cool next week? I'm ready for something cool any day. Yeah, let's workshop that. Are you all ready 
for something cool next week. Okay, so yeah, I think everyone's ready for something cool next week. You know, that's it's not hard to commit to. Indiegogo, all new story, lots of kick-ass art. Let's do this. The plot. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh. Okay, so um, this drove a uh, bunch of people absolutely insane with rage. Uh, so, um, again, I just want to re reiterate, do not contact any of these people. These people will actively engage in harassment. And then if you respond in any way, their response will be that you are the harasser. When I feel like, uh, specifically three of these people, this is one of the most perfect definitions of what harassment is. So, um, uh, 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 Joe Glass says, ah, uh, so big name. Yeah, see, even, even Luna sighs when she hears this uh, person. Ah, uh, so, big name comic creators launching his Indiegogo campaign to attract the CG masses this week, huh? I, for people who have regular lives and you don't go on Twitter, this is this kind of like babyish, like pseudo tween speech patterns and slang that SJWs do. I mean, I think it's part of their like, I'm like super harmless, like vicious, vicious people. So he goes on. It amazes me that people still don't know who this guy is. It's this. Well, you know, just say his name. Uh, they're doing this uh, again. This is all this is all like middle school tween behavior. This is called Voldemorting. It's when you want to talk about the person, but you don't want to say your name because you want because these people are, are cowards or bullies. It's the same thing. Bullies are cowards, cowards are bullies. They want to be, oh, I wasn't talking about him. I was talking about the other person. But then they also do, it's like, oh, you know, you're going to here to defend yourself? Oh, that's attacking. That's harassment. So they, they play this stupid ass little game. Um, uh, they either do Voldemorting where they purposely don't say your name or they do reverse Voldemorting where they will like awkwardly fit your entire legal name to like every defamatory statement they can put against you. It amazes me that people still don't know who this guy is. It's the same guy flirting with, please look at the screen, comics hate, and he spelled the O with the zero. Middle school. This is middle school. Every time. He been telling you who he is if you just keep your eyes peeled. Real mixed metaphor for a supposed, what? Writer for hire. Um... Uh, so, uh, then, uh, Kwanzer says, and again, I have, I, I, I've actually gone out of my way not to talk about these people. I've done a couple of videos about Mags, but she has a, uh, TV show and kind of made the news. Uh, I, I, I think it might've been a year or more before, since I spoke about Kwanzer. Uh, the last time I spoke about Joe Glass was, I believe, to promote his Kickstarter, which the, he then claimed that that was harassment. So, and I, I think that was also like a year plus ago. So, um. Kwanzer says, Sean Gordon Murphy pushes plausible deniability, but he knows Tanipal is a bigot, Indiegogo is comics taints, middle school, refuge, and his actions are dog whistles. So a dog whistle, when you say customer service, they say that's a dog whistle that really means not customer, I, I, I don't know. I, I've classified people like this into uh, what I call, it's kind of a broad group. It's called mentally ill, malicious, and miserable. Um, and I don't think any of these people are mentally ill, but definitely malicious and definitely miserable. Um, so, uh, and, and then he just throws shade on the concept. He says it looks like drawn together. Um, so the, the reference to Doug Snapel was when they successfully, about a month or two ago, intimidated a... Uh, uh, Sean out of providing a cover for Bigfoot Bill 2 by Doug Tanapple. Um, uh, he, he then ended up pulling out because they were, oh, 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 Doug. And then like a week and a half later, Doug got Mike Mignola and they tried to cancel him and he just ignored him. That's what you do. You just ignore these people. The problem with Sean Gordon Murphy, and I've fallen for it as well, is these people get into your head, they get into your heart, and you're like, oh, well, I want to prove I'm a good guy, so you know, I'll donate you know, thousands of dollars to charity. <laughs> They'll just ignore it or mock it. Any, anything you do, uh, they, they just want to hurt people. These people, they sell nothing. 
uh, I've, I've shown the sales figures for mags for quans or Joe Glass, I don't think has ever had anything on the stands. Uh, he, 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 he does these comicsologies, the pride I've, I've done videos on them before, but they found this way to give themselves a sort of power. They sit on Twitter and they operate in their whisper networks every single day for years. Th this stuff, this goes back years. It goes back to 2017. Joe Glass, he put uh, uh, several uh, false um, uh, uh, reports for my YouTube, almost got my YouTube taken down um, because I called someone Dandelion Boy. <laughs> it was, you know, and he was a journalist at the time. Uh, Kwanzaa and Mags uh, on Thanksgiving of all times, uh, 2018, coordinated to get my YouTube channel taken down again by following, uh, filing false DMCA claims that I was able to beat both times easily. Um, but uh, just uh, uh, troublemakers, vicious, malicious people. I, I brought this up all the time, that the people who sell the most, Sean Gordon Murphy, Scott Snyder, Tom King, nobody's afraid of them. In, in, in any typical you know industry, the people who bring in the most money, uh, they are, you know, cater to the most and they're the most powerful they're the ones oh you know don't get on the, don't get on the wrong side you can say anything you want to tom king's face he's, he's he has no reputation for being a malicious and, and attacking he just kind of takes it you know uh rolls with it scott snyder you know the same thing um but these people who are barely in the industry i mean just barely in it it's a lot of you know like how do i know you like what did you do like kwanzer worked with Mark Wade on Ignited, which sells like 1,100 copies. In the comic book industry, you know, uh, you know, effects on target, basically zero. They can't sell books, they can't promote them, but they can hurt people and they can scare people because they have a track record for viciousness. Years of attacks and they will just whittle away. They will, you know, contact who you work for. They will try to interrupt. I, they can't sell comics, but they can hurt you. And that's their only real effect in the industry. Um, so then uh, Mags goes in, and this one is just... So uh, Mags says, he absolutely knows. He and I had a long conversation ages ago about this in DMs. He knows, he knows what? That Indiegogo is somehow a CG platform? It's, it's the place that has all the inertia. Three years ago, it was... Kickstarter had all the inertia. They had all the momentum. That was the place to go. Then they hired a political commissar. They started promoting lesbian bike riding anthologies over what sells the most. If you go on Indiegogo and you sell a lot, they'll promote you at the top. I don't even think it's uh, human directed. I think it's literally the algorithm. But on uh, Kickstarter, you have people who have 30, 40, 50,000 doing really good. And some lesbian bike riding anthology that has $4,000 will be the number one promoted. So you, you got a political commissar. You got them promoting based on identity, not based on sales. Uh, they got an old UI that looks like has been updated since 2012. Then they've got a union that exists because the people at Kickstarter wanted to gatekeep more. They wanted more power on able to push out projects they don't like by garbage people and all this type of stuff. So it's just not the place to, to go to be safe and, and you know, maximize your profit. And that's what this is. They, they say this crazy, ooh, IGG, that's a CG haven. If you go there, you're a garbage person on the wrong side of history and you're part of a hate group. It's completely mentally ill. These people, uh, their careers are charity cases from the pre-COVID comic book industry. Uh, one of the reasons they're coming out so vicious is, you know, because they're seeing that they're power. Who's going to, you know, you, we're going to see how they kind of had to be listened to. So um, Mag says he absolutely knows, I guess, knows that Indiegogo is synonymous with CG. Even there's there's people who hate CG. There's people who are neutral. There are people who have not even heard of CG um, that are on Indiegogo. Um, he absolutely knows. He and I had a long conversation ages ago about this in DMs. I know people had been saying shit about him for a long time, but he was always supportive and kind with me, and I fell for his defenses over and over again. But when he claimed he had no idea about Doug this time, after he had already told me in pri This has nothing to do with Doug to Naple. Like, I'm pretty sure Doug does, does Kickstarters, right? Not Indiegogo's? 
I think he mixes it up. This has nothing to do. This is just Sean Gordon Murphy trying to make some money. Now she's bringing up Doug to Naples. It's like, um, but when he claimed he had no idea about Doug this time, after he already told me in private, he had cut off his professional relationship with Tenable as a result of our discussion. So, so I have a question, and this is a serious question. In what industry is a complete fraud charity case who sells less than a thousand comics four years into their career get to tell someone in the top five what to do? What, what we see is the, the kind of priest-like position SJWs have um, gotten themselves into. Uh, these people are all vicious. They're all in whisper networks. So someone like Sean Gordon Murphy realizes he had to appease them. Why is someone who sells 700 copies talking to the guy who sells 57,000? He doesn't have anything to learn from her. They're not really peers in any respect at all, but he has to appease her because of her viciousness. Uh, it sounds like he spent years doing it. She talks about his being supportive and kind. Um, and then, uh, I was so eager to believe this big famous guy was my friend that I let shit slide, gave the benefit of every doubt, defended him over and over again. Um, and then Joe says, yeah, it was that last time claiming he didn't know about Doug. The first thing I thought was bullshit, not just because, every, it, how, who, who, okay, first of all, in the industry, you're, you are less than the zero. You are literally a charity case. You are a UNICEF kid. You have a Make-A-Wish Foundation career, as does Mags, as does Kwanzer. It was a completely upside-down industry pre-COVID where complete failures and frauds were kind of like the moral police. And people who actually bring in millions of dollars to their companies had to appease these, these, these freaking villains. I mean, think of it, you can see their motivation. It's purely to hurt people because they can't deliver. They can't sell, they can't create, they're frauds. Um, the first thing I thought was bullshit, not just because everyone let him know last time, but because he'd specifically had a talk with you. I realized then it was a ploy. I'm sorry he used you like that. No, no, he wasn't using her. She was attacking him. She was giving him a night letter. Hey, you are being watched. Mags, because of her privileged status in the industry, gets to lord it over people. I mean, one of the things that, you know, I guess this is one of those things that people just kind of know, but when you say it, it makes more sense. Sean Gordon Murphy wrote two miniseries for DC, Batman, Curse of the White Knight, and Batman White Knight. Each one, you're hiring colorists, letterers, production people, editors, then you're hiring all the people in the office, marketing, publicity, payroll, HR, all of that stuff. All of those people get their pay from the bread earners, people like Sean Gordon Murphy. DC is allowed to have charity books like D Mags' DC book because people like Sean bring in millions of dollars from the books, from the reprints, from the overseas. Uh, that's a whole market barely anyone talks about. The overseas markets, the translations. And then of course you have the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the merch. And that can bring in a lot, the statues and all those type of things. John Gordon Murphy's brought in millions of dollars and that allows them to hire charity cases um, to look good, but that was pre-COVID. Um, and then uh, you see these uh, the, the, the way they speak as if they're sort of, you know, the high priests of this, you know, comics town. Um, so Sean Gordon Murphy didn't use Mags. He had to deal with her. He had to protect himself from her and her viciousness and her vicious whisper network that is made of all these people and many more. Um, it's hard for people like us who want to see the good in people and give people the benefit of doubt. You are frauds, your charity cases. You only exist because successful people, people who are bread earners, people whose work benefits everyone. DC is able to stay and not lay people off because they've got so much money coming in from people like Sean Gordon Murphy and Tom King and Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo and all those people. So don't talk to me about, uh, you know, looking for the good in people. You are vicious. You're, you're the bad guys. You're the villains. Nobody in 10, 20, 30 years is going to look back. Remember, remember SJWs? 
Remember, has, remember how they made everyone scared all the time? Oh, that was fun. Remember when they would pretend that jokes weren't jokes? I remember the Whisper Networks. No, <laughs> everyone's going to look back and go, God, I'm so glad those pieces of shit lost their power. I'm so glad we stopped listening to them, stopped being afraid of them. Recognize them for the cowards and the bullies and villains that they are. It's hard for people like us who want to see the good in people and give people the benefit of the doubt. Unfortunately, there are those out there who will take advantage of us. No, 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 no. They're trying to get around you. You are nothing but a continual obstacle for the people who create wealth and value in the industry. And then uh, that being said, it's not, worth it's not worth losing that hope in people. And Kwanzaa says, yup to all this. It's also a sad reflection of margins in comics being so thin for freelancers that even a big name will see a hack raking in cash and get dollar sign. What are you talking about? People are buying comics they want to buy because they like the story, the character, the art, or they like the person selling it. And you people with 20 years, 10 years, 5 years in the industry, you can't sell shit. So then we get a bunch of people going back. They're like, ooh, who is it? I'm ready to cancel them too. He's like, oh, I don't want to say it, but I'll give you lots of hints. If you are going to decide to hurt someone and destroy their life, at least have the goddamn honor and dignity to say their names. Leave these people alone. Don't contact them by any means. They can't produce. They can't sell. All they can do is push forward their identity and emotionally blackmail like people. The idea that Sean Gordon Murphy had to let waste any time Appeasing Max is ridiculous. And why are they big mad? Because they know Sean Gordon Murphy's going to go on IGG and make 300, 400, 500,000. The stuff needs to end. The, the post-COVID industry, whatever shape it's in, should have no position for this kind of viciousness, um, this petty vindictiveness. Um, now, one of the good things, and Ethan pointed this out when we were uh, going through a live stream, is that these numbers, like this thing's been up for eight hours. Five retweets, 37 likes. Even on Mags' stuff, 11 likes, nine, nine, nine. A year ago, this would have been 50. Two years ago, it would have been a couple hundred. So the good news is they pretty much lost all of their buy-in from people. I mean you're getting down to three and two. There, there's not a lot of uh, uh, buy-in. Uh, but the problem is that people make mistakes still, you know, they get in your head. I mean, this becomes a factor. It becomes a discussion point. Hey, if we do X, Y, and Z, they're going to make a, so let's just do Z and we'll, we'll just cut off X, Y. Pretty sure soon you're cutting yourself off from a whole bunch of stuff. The best thing is just to ignore them and freaking Charlie Mike. Sean Gordon Murphy even with the really stupid name of Sean Murphy's The Plot Holes, uh, this is going to make minimum 300000 probably in the you know 400000 to 500000 range. And that's great. He's been great with people, customer service. I, I think some of one of these people down here. Oh, so we'll, we'll look at this. I mean, so you look at the, the petty vindictiveness and meanness of, of these people. And then you look at Sean Gurn. I'm not, what? I'm not paying for ghostery. Um, uh, so Sean Gordon Murphy puts up this 228 retweets, 1.7 thousand likes, and you get, to, you know, people are excited. Hey, you're going to do a pre-launch email. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to promote this. You know, people giving some advice, just excited. Dan Fragas here. He's excited. Blake Northcott is doing a, she's fainting apparently. Uh, Rick Remender, uh, three, uh, uh, bro fists, homie fists. Uh, Larry's Comics likes the logo. See a lot of happiness, a lot of buying in. Uh, uh, this is the direction you go in. Go in the direction of uh, these enthusiastic, happy, normal people who just want to buy comics and read them, even if they have really wonky titles. And ignore the uh, the haters, the mentally ill, the malicious, these, these awful shrinking villains. You've heard of shrinking violets, shrinking vil villains in the uh, comic book industry. So let's... Okay, so be on the lookout for Sean Gordon Murphy's uh, The Plot Holes. <laughs> uh, still got six days to change that title there, Sean. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone. Uh, give it to the GoFundMe, the, the, the Patreon, and the Indiegogo. Let's go check that out.
See if that's gone up while I've been blathering. All right. Very, uh, very uh, thankful. Going to be doing a lot more uh, live streams. That really is, it's, it's not optional. It is part of crowdfunding. It is. You launch it and you promote it in lots of different ways. And live streams is one of the main uh, ways to uh, promote it. So uh, Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar, Pandemic, Expendables Go to Hell. All links are in the description of this video if you want to uh, uh, back it. And I will have more uh, comic book reviews and comic book industry news tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.